Get ready for a fun and nerdy deep dive with the daddies of Plant Daddy Podcast. Bloom and Grow YouTube Show. Hey, plant friends, welcome back to Bloom and Grow the YouTube Show. Um, I'm so excited to share this conversation with some plant daddies, Matthew and Stephen from the Plant Daddy Podcast, on a recent collaboration that we did on Bloom and Grow Radio Podcast. A deep dive, 90 minute conversation on humidity and winter plant care in general. So those boys are so darn cute that I wanted to give you a little video clip of the podcast interview that we did. Also, the podcast interview is 90 minutes long. This conversation happened at around the 50 or 60 mark. Um, so I wanted to just bring it, deliver it to you on a platter <laughs> because it's so chock full of such great information where we talk all about humidity, what to understand about our indoor environments and how to maybe alter the humidity to set our plants up for success, especially in the winter. When it's dry, man, how many times do you wake up in the winter, winter just like gasping for air? So I'm thrilled to introduce you guys to Matthew and Steven from the Plant Daddy podcast for our humidity deep dive. Before we dive into this conversation, I would love it if you could be my plant friend, like this video, and subscribe to the show for more nerdy stuff to come. Okay, here are the boys. All right, so humidity the big topic of winterizing plants and also house plants in general. But this is something that a lot of people start to think about in the winter when our radiators kick on, our forced air happens, and all of a sudden the humidity in our house drops and we all always wake up in the morning like gasping for air with, you yeah. know, sore throats every day. So <laughs> humid, yeah, exactly. So adding humidity can be great for our bodies as well as our plants. Mm -hmm. um, so before we dive into some, into some humidity hacks and best practices, let's just understand the humidity levels that our plants enjoy outdoors. So in the jungle where our tropical plants are, like what are those humidity levels around? So I was reading this, I found a figure that said 88% um, for the Amazon. Okay. And yeah, that is very different. Um, you know, like I think we all know home environments are so different and in nature, it's kind of an extreme environment, the human home, right? Yes. Like. Mm -hmm. It is very dark. It is kind of dry. So, you know, bringing your plant in from its like 180 degree skylight with tons of, you know, humidity sources and everything into our house, it is kind of a big ask of us mm -hmm. or of them. So, yeah. yeah. And, and like I've, I've been in uh, like the Andes Mountains of Peru where they have these cloud forests where the mountains, these tropical jungle mountains are literally just in the cloud bank. So, yeah just standing there you just get wet your, yeah. your hair just gets wet and at every breath you take like there's moisture like collecting well on my mustache but you know not everyone has a mustache and so the the orchids like there were so many of these little like cloud forest orchids growing there these are plants that i will never ever grow in I my have home killed many of them yes yeah mm -hmm. But on the other hand, like if you're talking plants from Mexico, like the Monstera or Anthurium clarinervium, they actually might have like seasonal humidity that goes down to like the low 60s. I think I was seeing kind of, I was looking at this website that gave like rainfall and temperature and humidity like by year, mm -hmm. like throughout the 12 months. So it does vary considerably. And I think that a lot of the plants that we grow are kind of fine to live in this like 40 to 60% range. That's yeah. kind of my target, which for, you know, all the plants that I've grown, the vast majority of them are quite fine in that range. And Steve even grows some plants that I would traditionally think like, wow, that needs more humidity. But then I see what his hygrometer reads and it's like, oh, well, I it's guess I'm wrong. embarrassing. Yeah. So for a lot of my <laughs> plants, I try, I don't try to keep it dry, but um, you know, if you have drier, you know, a drier home humidity wise, then your terracotta pots, I feel like they do dry out faster. And, you know, if you need your cacti and succulents to dry out quickly, um, that is easier than if you have 70% humidity, right? Yeah. So totally. it's all kind of part of that conditions equation that we think about all the time. Yeah. So I think un understanding that, I think as plant parents, like I think we need to, and I talk about this a lot on, on various episodes, but our plants are not designed to live in our indoor environments. And I think part of us as plant parents 
needs to understand the responsibility of trying to best replicate to the best of our abilities those uh, outdoor environment the outdoor environment for our plants but at the same time i think there's part of us that also just needs to set it free that we are ever going to recreate the amazon rainforest in our homes yeah, I think and that's realistically true. We can't keep our homes at 80% humidity. The paint would peel off of our walls, right? Just and then ask, the drywall. Just <laughs> ask Matthew. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Everything yeah. would rot. <laughs> I, yeah. I actually, um, like two apartments ago, I had a second bedroom that I just kind of turned into my plant room. And it was a carpeted space. And, and spoiler alert, he did not get the deposit back. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, yeah, like there, <laughs> there were other issues in this building that right. were completely independent for me. Like the roof was rotting. So mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. but you know, the mildew was insane. Like you open the door and you're just stepping into a greenhouse, but it's a carpeted bedroom yeah. and my plants freaking loved it. But on the other hand, like I moved a bookcase when we moved and the back of the wall was just gray and black mildew. So totally. it is really not what you should be doing in your home. If you're growing something that actually requires that, mm -hmm. like I hope you have a greenhouse or even an Ikea, you know, grow cabinet. Yeah. The new Ikea cabinet that everyone and their mom is setting up. Oh, that exactly. is like a new thing. Right? <laughs> it is blowing I mean, my that, mind. Yeah, and our friend Jane Perone from On the Ledge, I know you know her too, yes. Maria, well. <laughs> she just did an, an episode um, interviewing people about that. Uh, yeah, I would kind of point you there if you are really, really worried about humidity or you have such a, you know, demanding plant that you need to set up that 80% or something. Yes, yeah. I recently had Doug Chamberlain on the show, um, yes. a Hoya expert. It was an amazing, Definitely amazing episode. And I loved that he, one. He is a hardcore Hoya lover and mm -hmm. he has a room that has green like basically greenhouse conditions set up to set his Hoyas up for success and he takes that next step but mm -hmm. I think you know 30 to 60 percent at least I I'm playing with hygrometers and I've got a couple of different types yeah. that I'm experimenting with and the um one of the manuals says zero to 30 frowny face 30 to 60 mm. happy face 60 yeah. plus frowny face again so i feel like <laughs> with us you know shooting for 30 to 60 where do you guys like to hover because i know you guys have been measuring your humidity for a long time so where do you guys like yeah. to hover um in your own homes and i think we have different approaches here um but i think they're both good actually so for my house, I mean, often it's 30%. And I see this because I have uh, these, um, you know, monitors on tables and it's monitoring temperature and also humidity. And I'm really kind of, I was most interested in temperature actually for those. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, I would say it's mostly 30. And then for me, I do have some plants that require a lot and I kind of have separate chambers set up for them. So it's a little bit like that Ikea cabinet. Um, and then in there, yeah, these are, you know, kind of the two examples I have, I have bell jars for some mm -hmm. and then I have uh, like a kind of a fish tank that um, I have lights on and it's mostly covered and that's for helium fora this um, South American carnivorous plant that likes humidity a lot um, and then there I can maintain closer to 80 right but then you don't have uh, the mold issues that you're talking about I think Matthew tries to do a lot more in open air I mean I use like the same uh, strategies we were talking about previously, right? Like, you know, groups of plants and uh, trays here and there. But I think Matthew goes a step, a couple steps further with uh, um, humidifiers and things like that, right? Yeah. Um, and just something to point out, Stephen's plants are on average dramatically smaller than mine. He grows a lot of things in like two yeah. to four inch pots, whereas mm -hmm. I'm growing a lot of things in like six to 12 inch pots. So for me, it's not really yeah. as reasonable to use bell jars. However, the one plant that I do grow like covered in a cloche under lights is one of these helium fora because they come from these like high plateaus in Venezuela where they're always bathed in mist. So right. it's very unrealistic to expect to grow this as a standard house plant, but it's a small compact plant that does well in this enclosed space. The only other plants that I do in partially enclosed or enclosed conditions are like jewel orchids or something. But for the majority of my plants, uh, I grow a lot of ficus, I grow a lot of orchids, I grow a lot of aeroids, calathea, like the Marantaceae. 
I, like I've said, like I kind of aim for like 50 to 60% humidity. Mm -hmm. If we have a particularly hot period of the year, I'll like run my dehumidifier on its maximum level uh, in order to kind of boost it maybe up to like 75 to 80 for short periods. Just Your humidifier, because, you mean, right? Yes. To raise it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Because I want to make sure that in the hot periods of summer where some plants might be like reaching a point of stress, that the humidity is increased to help them through that. Because the warmer your conditions, the more the plant is transpiring, the more moisture is being lost. You might not want to be increasing your watering uh, and risking root health. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way to kind of get through it. But for the most part, like I am very pleased with just kind of that 50 to 60 percent range yeah i and matthew and i were talking about this before um before you, we joined you here we both think that often humidity is kind of like a misdiagnosis right like your plant yes. might have issues but it's not really the humidity that you need to raise 10 percent. and i think uh -huh. a lot of people are bending over backward to try to do that and it's maybe not the issue anyway um yeah, yeah. it sounds well, like you agree right in your experience maria yeah, I I think in general. So the thing that I think is uh, very illuminating talking to you guys is you do such a good job of really understanding all of your plants and where they come from and their natural environment. And so with your plants that live in a high mountain mist scenario, you're going to like double down and figure out how to, you know, uh, up their humidity. But mm -hmm. for the most part, most of our hardy house plants that the majority of us are caring for don't need that. And I feel like yeah. a lot of people get very stressed about humidity and mm -hmm. in the winter and humidity and, oh my God, I have a brown leaf. Now I need to do humidity and I need to up the humidity. And yes, I think added humidity within that 30 to 60 range is, is going to make plants happier. But I also think that I've never run a humidifier. I've had plants for three years. Mm -hmm. I've had radiators. I've had horrific apartment conditions in New York City and uh, you yeah. know this old tutor I'm living in now and my plants are still alive so I think that I think humidity is a great thing to experiment with and I'm actually personally really excited to to double down and experiment a lot with humidity this year just because I'm curious about it and I'm curious to see if my plants would be happier but I think mm -hmm. that people shouldn't stress unless they've gotten a jewel orchid or they have a yeah. lot of Marantaceae, which are definitely yeah. more high humidity loving plants or um, carnivorous plants are another one. I think that people, I think in our, in our journeys in plant parenthood and we just want to do a good job. And, and I think yeah. it's really easy to feel like you have to buy all these things and you have to make sure, you know, everything yeah. is perfect. I think that also like cut yourself a break and learn yeah. as you go and mm -hmm. experiment. Um, also something I want to get into is getting those cloches and having like a beauty and the beast moment, you know, where I put totally. some plants yeah. under a <gasps> yeah, glass cloche. Right behind me, I can yeah them. exactly let's, let's um i think like but i'm but i'm going to experiment with it because i'm curious and um but like also the plants that i'm going to experiment with have been doing fine you know i'm just yeah. curious to see yeah. if i can have them be better thank you plant daddies for such a good talk they are so awesome and they complement each other so beautifully and then also i felt like the three of us just had such a nice conversation i kind of brought the sappiness they kind of brought like the nerd deep dive aspect of it and man i like those guys so make sure you're subscribed to the youtube channel because i'm going to be featuring them in about a month again and i don't want you to miss these lovely men and if you haven't already and you're curious about experimenting with humidity in your home, go and watch last week's video where I did my hygrometer, hygrometer, um, moisture meter review um, and share a few of the things that I'm going to be experimenting with when it comes to humidity with my home this winter. Okay, until next time, plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs> Do, 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 do